going to have everyone's attention. I know it's a beautiful Friday. We're ready for the weekend. But let's just think about this. Uh, I know that there's folks now. Hi. I know my mom's watching. Other folks are watching. Say hello to the virtual audience, everybody. Come on, wave. Fan yourselves. It is hot, yes. <laughs> uh, they're looking at us like, my goodness, you guys are burning in there. They might be in their living rooms, in their kitchens. Anyways, thank you to those tuning in at home. Um, this is the portion where everyone here can hopefully contribute something to our fund a need. You heard from Amanda, you heard from everyone here, there is a need and we need to get this machine purchased and ready so we can serve our community and make it effortless for people to take those exams. Like I said, I know I take my mom to her exams every year. They're very uncomfortable, they take forever. This machine is state of the art and it's about time we provide this. So. What we're going to do, those at home, you know what to do. There's a button that you can click. We're going to start at a high level and work our way down. I just hope to get 100% participation here today. All right? We're going to do the work, and this is the main meat of our luncheon, okay? This really is the most important thing because care is important. We need to care for our community, screening for women for breast cancer, regardless, regardless of their ability to pay. That is the main difference here. It's access, and we need this to happen, and we are almost there. We want to get three quarters of our goal just in this luncheon, but we can supersede that. Fundraising is at its best here. So let's upgrade this MRI machine and give this program the ability to go for another 20 more years. Can you believe how long it took to get something new? So let's do this. 20 years more, and you could do it today with a $500,000 goal, so let's start at $50,000. I'm just going to ask right there. You never know, but $50,000, you never know, okay? $50,000, just extra zeros. That's all it is, right? You know, $5, $50,000. As an auctioneer, they're all the same. You just add more zeros. Uh, do we have a $50,000 gift? Yes, we got one at $69,000. Give a round of applause. Oh, my goodness, we have a fifty. dollars 69 is in. You are amazing. A tax deductible gift. That is how we kick off our fund and need, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it. That was awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay, we have 50,000 in the bag. That is so beautiful. Let's go with $25,000. I know that there's some capacity in this crowd. We've been doing this luncheon for a long time. But think about this tax deductible gift. You know, it's at the end of the year, just saying, but you're doing something good. There's so many win win wins here, folks. Who's in at $25,000? Raise your paddles high and proud, even in the audience. Online, click that button, just as simple as a click away. $25,000. Who's in at $25,000? Could raise it high and proud. We already put fifty in the bank. Let's go $25,000. Who else? Anyone? All right, we're going to ask another level here. We're going to go down to fifteen, maybe $15,000. 15000 can we raise it up? Oh, my goodness. Miss Carol Middleton puts $15,000 in the books, number 200. Carol, you are so amazing. You're so generous. And thank you, Carol. That is $15,000 in the bag. We have $65,000. Now, who else is in at fifteen? dollars 15, dollars 15, dollars 15000 Raise it up high and proud. Every gift today is tax deductible. We're going to raise the money to get this machine and into the community as soon as we can. 15000 last call. All in, all done. Anyone? Big hand. Thank you, Carol Middleton. 15000 and earlier at 50K. Let's go 10,000. Let's go 10,000. Let's just throw it out there. Nice even number. 10,000 hard earned dollars going to this amazing machine that we need so bad in our community to have access to give these screenings and exams in our community. Who's in a 10? 10. Would have been 10. Would have been 10. Let's raise it up. We got 10,000. 118. 118. Yes, at 10,000. Who else is in a 10? 10. Would have been 10. Would have been 10. Let's go. Raise it up high and proud at 10. 10,000. Once, twice, anyone? Big hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At 10,000. Okay, now this is where I know there's lots of levels. But that 5,000, I know, think about this, what 5,000 can certainly do here. Uh, it could certainly do a lot. We can get to our goals if we can get a handful of these at $5,000. So anyone in this crowd like to raise their paddle high 
Oh my goodness, we got a 5,000 gift right here. 174 at 5,000. 27, yes, at 5,000. Thank you, 27. 307, yes, 307. 5,000. 109, yes, 109. Give it up right there, 109. A 246, thank you so much. 246, 5,000. Oh, that's my, that's my VIP row right there. 152, yes, 152. 197, thank you. 197, 136, yes, 136. Who else is in? 210, oh, my favorite hat in the world. 210, I love you. Yes, 210, yes, that's another 5,000. Let's raise it up, anyone. Come on, put it all together. Last call, 5 5 would have been 5 once, 5 5 would have been 5 twice, all in, all done. Big hand to those supporters here today. Raise them up one more time at 5,000 if you can put it up there. Hopefully you're recording also on video as well. All right, I know we have some folks. You see them right there, okay. All right, thank you, thank you. Can we move on? We're good? Okay, write them down. Here we go, $2,500 can go a long ways. We have a few more levels left. Let's show our support at $2,500. So those at home, those here, who can go? 25, would have been now 25, let's start it up. James in the middle, now 263, 263 at 2500, 34, 34 at 2500, let's go. 183, yes, 183, we got another one right there, 153, thank you, 153, 18, 18, thank you, 18, 272, yes, 272, 77, that's my year. I was born. 77 was a good year. 77 at 2,500. 127. Yes. 127. Let's keep it going. Come on, everybody. Anyone else at 2,500? 2,500. There we go. Raise it up once. $2,500 asking twice. Last chance for our fund to need at 25. Let's show our support. And a big hand right there at $2,500. That was beautiful. Here we go, 1,000. Now I know there's the capacity at $1,000, okay? $1,000, just think about it. We can get a collection of these and get so close to our goal. We just want to reach at least three quarters of that and hopefully we'll raise the rest. We need this machine now. So let's go. At $1,000 here today. Who can go one, one, what a bit, one, what a bit, one, what a bit, one, let's go. My vision's good in the corner. Let's go 282, 282 two, at 1,000. 295, yes, 295, yes, 314, yes, 314. Who else? Are you just uh, blocking the sun or do you want 1,000? Okay, I don't know, hesitation there. All right, 117, 117 at 1,000. 304, yes, 304. 206, yes, 206. 88, thank you, 88. 289, hang on over there, 289. 41, thank you, 41. 31, thank you so much. 303, you're the best, 303. Down the middle, let's do it. 159, yes, 159. 256, 256, 224. Thank you, 224. Anyone else at 1,000? Refrain from fanning or blocking because this is $1,000, unless you want to. 212. I know that's confident. 212. Anyone else right there? Oh, 315. Miss 315. Let's give it going. Anyone else? Anyone? 111 one, would have been one. Oh, 1984. 84. No, it's just 84. That was a good year, too, by the way. 84. Yes, you're in at 84. Who else? Miss 305 is in the house. 305, yes, 305. All right, anyone else at 1,000? Let's go. One, one would have been one. All in, all done. Wow, that was a lot of thousands. Give a round of applause. That was well over 20, 25,000 right there. That was beautiful. This is what we do as a community. We really come together. So write these numbers down. I hope you're going right there. So let's go $500. We are almost down to it, okay? 500. Just think about it. Hey, I spend a lot of money on my Air Jordan sneakers at the games. Those things are like two fifty dollars apiece, so two pairs, $500. Yeah, does that up, right? $500, expensive dinner, wines, ugh, $500 we can spend. But you know what? This $500 will go a long way. So who can go in at $500 here today? Raise it high and proud. Let's get it going. Let's do it. All right. We got $500. Yes. 13 at $500. $105. $105. $174. Thank you. $174. $200. Now $200. Thank you again. 
Or is that the block of the sun? All right, three, three, four. Yes, three, three, four. Five hundred dollars at two o four. Two o four now forty eight. Let's sweep to the right. Three one two. Yes, three one two. Two nine three. Thank you. Two nine three. Raise it up. One two nine at five hundred. Two six zero. Yes, at five hundred. Sixty four. Sixty four. Yes, at five hundred. Back to the corner. Two three three. Yes, two three three. One six seven. One six seven. Thank you. Anyone else at five hundred? Raise it up. Here we go once, 500 asking twice, all in, all done, anyone? Big hand at the 500 level, that was awesome. My goodness, we are on a roll, folks. We have two more levels. Those at home, those here at the gardens at 250. Let's make an impact tonight at $250. It might not seem a lot, but if we collect all, we can get to our goals. Who's in with me at 250, 250, 250 here? Let's go at 250, 250, 141 at 250, 250, 180 at 250, 250, 317, 317 at 250, 250, 35, yes, 35, 248, 248 at 250. Anyone else? Love this table, these two. 235, 250, 250, 235, 189, 235. There we go, 189, 70, 70 is at 250. Oh, this table, I Again, I love you. 93. Thank you, 93. 125. Yes, 125. Raise it up high and proud, anyone. We got the corners right there. What is that? 62. You are amazing at 250 right here. Oh, that table is hot again. 298. Thank you so much, 298. Raise it up high, proud. Here we go. 250, 250. Anyone? 250, 250. Last chance. All in, all done. Big hand at 250. That was awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do, last level, folks, fun, fast, and furious. So now what we're going to do here, I'm not going to call in numbers. If you've given before, thank you so much. At a $100 level, if we can get every single person here, that is close to like $35,000. Throw in an additional 100 This is what I'm going to ask you. If you could do this at 100 on the last level, I think we can get to our goals or close to it. We're going to do a paddle sweep. So all you got to do, I'm not going to even rattle numbers. Our volunteers are standing by. They're going to collect $100 if you drop your paddle. But here's, let me just tell you something. I'm going to throw in something awesome. I'm going to give a shout out. Thank you so much to the Ting families. Give a round of applause. Ting family, they're donating. Not only are they supporters, but they're going to throw in from their dad's collection, the late, great John Ting from his Ting family wine cellars, a bottle of... 2000 Chateau Cheval Blanc, Saint Emilion Grand Cru, which is a premier Grand Cru Class A. That is worth $1,500. 100 points. It's like perfection in a bottle. Thank you to the Ting family and the wine cellars that they have. This exclusive wine at $1,500 value could be yours right now for just 100 bucks. So if we can get everyone here. Put it in the drawing. It's like an opportunity drawing. Raise your paddles high. Just drop it in. And we're going to pick that right after when the raffle begins. So let's go. Who could drop in $100 right here, right here? We've already given, but let's just drop it in. My wife's here too. Raise it up. Come on, let's collect it up. $100 for a $1,500 bottle of wine, courtesy of the amazing Ting family who I love to death. They are so generous from their own Late great father John Ting's family wine cellars, they have donated to this luncheon a big bottle of amazing Saint Emilion Chateau Cheval Blanc, which is worth $1,500. So as we collect this, raise it up. You're going to be put into the drawing, and then we're going to pick that at the raffle. So with that said, I am going to now transition. So raise it up. We got our volunteers standing by. Just drop it in. It's an extra 100 bucks, and we're going to pick that winner to win that $1,500 bottle in the end here after our keynote and our special guest. All right. Thank you again for your support. Give yourselves a big round of applause as we collect $100 paddles for the paddle sweep and the prize donated by the Ting family. I want to welcome our keynote speaker. She is uh, an award-winning broadcast journalist, author, member of the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, 
She's the founder of Rockin' Roberts Productions and a two-time cancer survivor. So she is a strong woman, indeed. She has served as co-anchor of ABC's Good Morning America since 2005. Any GMA fans in the house? Oh, my goodness. My favorite broadcast, by the way. She's also authored several works. Her latest book, Brighter by the Day, Waking Up to New Hopes and Dreams, shares her hard-won wisdoms and insightful experiences on finding good in the world. And you're going to have the opportunity to purchase her latest book with a personal signing after today's luncheon. I guarantee you're going to love this book. I definitely grab one here at the end of the luncheon. Are you ready? Come on, make some noise. Give her a big Bay Area welcome. Our keynote speaker, Miss Robin Roberts. Thank you, Franco. Thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, you just want to stretch. That's why you're standing up. You, I, I'm on to you right now. Thank you, thank you. I love you right back. Oh, what a beautiful day. Y'all are gorgeous, just gorgeous. I have been waiting since 2019 <laughs> to be with you, and you have proven to be more than worth the wait. And I am looking forward to having a conversation with Dr. Baker, but before that, just want to share a little bit of my of my background to give you a better understanding of how beneficial it was in helping me face down cancer. I am the proud daughter of Lawrence and Lucy Marion Roberts. My parents were the first in their families to go to college. They met and fell in love, Howard University. My father went on to be a Tuskegee Airman, the first black flying Air Corps in the military. They're clapping for you, Daddy. Oh, he had a distinguished career in the military for more than 30 years, retiring as a full colonel. Mama, she would love this luncheon. Oh my goodness, she'd have a hat on too. She would be fanning herself too, but she would be having a big old time here. And she was such a dedicated stay-at-home mom. And she put her aspirations on hold for a while. And once her baby girl, the last of the house went to college. Mama took off. She was appointed by the governor of Mississippi to be on the state board of education in Mississippi, of which she became the chair. She was on the Coliseum Commission, the Federal Reserve Bank Commission. I mean, you name it, Mama, she did it. And I'm so grateful that my mother and father encouraged their four children to go for it, go for their dreams, as they did. And my initial dream was to be a professional athlete. But what's that thing they call ability that you must have? <laughs> that I had the heart and the desire, but not quite the ability. But did you know that standing before you right now is the former state bowling champion of Mississippi? <laughs> Tennis was my real love. Oh, my goodness. I would be on those hot, steamy courts in Mississippi where I grew up, have a a bowl of melting strawberries and cream because I was dreaming of being at Wimbledon one day. But because of my height, I've been this height since about the sixth grade, so <laughs> basketball was placed in my hands. And, but by the time I got to high school, I realized I was not going to be a professional athlete. And I wanted to still fulfill my passion to be involved in sports. And so that's when I decided I was going to combine my passion for sports with my interest at the time in journalism because my big sister was a phenomenal broadcaster in New Orleans. And so being the tallest one on my high school team, I was playing the post position, but no one wanted a 5'10 post player in college. You can ask Tara Vanderveer, she will tell you that. No one wants a 5'10 post player. So I had to learn a new position on my own so I could get that scholarship. So I went into that, that gym, didn't have lunch. I would go into the gym and pass high. And I would learn to shoot a sweet 18-footer off glass, not because I wanted to be freshman of the year at Southeastern Louisiana University, which I was. Please hold your applause. <laughs> was not my motivation to learn how to shoot that same shot to my left to be MVP two years running at Southeastern Louisiana University. <laughs> I was putting myself in position. Proximity is power. You can wish, hope, and pray all you want. But you have to put yourself in position for good things to happen. So I do get the scholarship. I go off to Southeastern. 
there are a lot of people who want to be a sports journalist. So I want to get some practical experience. I go to the local radio station in Hammond, Louisiana. I say, I'm majoring in communications. I'm on the, I'm on the basketball team. I want to be a sports director here. And they did a little fact checking. And they get, came back and they said, you know what? We'll let you do that. How about this? Before your 8 o'clock class, you can have your own sports show. You can do play-by-play -play, um, basketball. That get all these practical experience you need. I think, wow. You know, asking you shall receive. This is great. And they said, well, in exchange, um, you're going to have to DJ on the weekends. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't. Oh, did we tell you we're a country music radio station? <laughs> I remember it oh so well. WFPR 14 Country, hometown country friends since 1947. Robin Renee here, which on Saturday night to play the best in country music. You haven't lived till you scratch a little Merle Haggard on a 100 watt radio station. And you know, they can't see me, they can only hear me, and I'd get, you know, I'll just call him Bubba. He'd call him, you sound pretty. I won't make you, I won't bring you home to mama. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> and I don't want that either. But thank you, just as, but thank you for calling. So I get my degree, I get the experience, and uh, people still don't want to hire me to be a sports caster. They offer me positions in news. I received one part-time offer in sports for $5.50 an hour, 30 hours a week, to be the weekend sports anchor in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Didn't hesitate to take that job. I was dreaming big but focusing small. When I was facing cancer, I was dreaming big and focusing small on those day-to-day -day things that would get to me to where I am right now standing before you. So I go off to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, Biloxi, Mississippi, Nashville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, and then da-da-da, da-da-da, the worldwide leader in sports. All along the way, people were trying to get me to transition into news, but I didn't want that. I was in my comfort zone. And then I realized that I needed courage to step outside of my comfort zone. And you need courage to step out of your comfort zone when you're facing cancer. And I'm so glad that I went to Good Morning America, a bigger platform. I was just there a short time when I wrote my first book, From the Heart, Seven Rules to Live By. And I was encouraging people. I was sharing how I used being you know, dreaming big, focusing small, venturing outside of your comfort zone, focusing on the, the solution, not the problem, and asking people, what, is, what are your rules? What have gotten you through difficult times? And it was about that time I was called back because a dear friend and colleague had passed away from colon cancer, Joel Siegel. And I was asked to be a part of the tribute show. And during the show, I happened to be speaking with his doctor, who said had Joel received the colonoscopy at the age of 50 instead of 55, that the outcome could have been different for him. And how Joel, since his diagnosis, had used those years to tell people about early detection and how important it is. That very night, I go home. I'm tired from being on the road for a book tour. I'm mourning the loss of a friend and colleague. I'm in the shower, and I detect a lump on my right breast. Because I had been diligent in self-exams, I knew this one felt different. I had moved from Connecticut, where ESPN is based, to New York. And sometimes you're lax in changing your medical professions, professionals. And I did have an appointment for months down the road, a new doctor. And I kept thinking, Robin, come on. Are you going to wait? You just did a story of your friend and colleague who was saying, early detection, early detection. So I called the doctor's office. And again, it's a doctor's office I didn't have a relationship with. And I didn't tell him why I was calling. I just said, can I move up my appointment? And the receptionist was very kind. And she said, I'm sorry, we're totally booked. We're not going to be able to do that. And I felt like saying, do you know who I think I am? Don't make me call Oprah. I will call Oprah. <laughs> I thought it. I didn't do it. I said, thank you. I didn't stop there. Went to my new colleagues. I said, can you recommend a doctor here in New York? Again, not telling them why. I just said, I just need a, I just need a, a GP. Dr. Albert Knapp. I was able to get an appointment with him right away. And it was just a general look under the hood, kick the tires kind of exam. Very, very basic. Just getting to know your physician for the first time. He was about to leave the exam room when I said, ooh, Dr. Knapp, 
um, you know, I have this lump. I'm sure it's nothing, but it's in a very awkward position in, in my breast. And he said, aren't you, don't you work at ABC? You're a journalist, right? And I said, yes, sir. He said, that's called bearing the lead. You should have come in saying, doctor, I have a lump in my breast. But I didn't. I didn't. He examined it. He immediately said, you're going to get a mammogram, and you're going to get an ultrasound because I have dense breast tissue. So you're going to need an ultrasound as well. And no one had ever said that to me. It was the end of the day, and I waited. I waited because I didn't have an appointment. And they just said, if you would wait until the end of the day, we'll fit you in. Mammogram, perfect. Ultrasound, detected a tumor. The technician said, you know, you're going to need a needle biopsy. And I said, I, you know, it's been a long day. I, can I, I, can I, I'll, I'll come back. I promise I'll come back. She went and got the radiologist, and I'll never forget her, this woman. Whew. She came in. She held my hand, that compassion. And I know it had been a long day for her. And she held my hand, and she simply said, you know, why don't we just take care of this right now? Why don't we just do this right now? I said, OK. So we had the needle biopsy. And then a few days later, the words, no one is prepared to hear, you have cancer. And I honestly didn't know how much I was going to share. I had no idea. I was triple negative, a very aggressive form of breast cancer that I later learned is very prevalent in women of color. I didn't know that at the time. And I knew that I was going to need surgery, chemotherapy, the red devil, and then radiation. And it was my dear, dear mother who said, honey, make your mess your message, just as Joel did. There are so many people who don't have the resources that you have. Be their voice. Be their messenger. Let them see what it's like to live and to work with cancer. And so I did that. And I shared as much as I thought would be helpful for those who might be walking a similar path. When I went through chemotherapy and I lost my hair, I, sh I showed my hair being shaved, my head being shaved, and being fitted for a wig. And I wore a trusty little anchor wig on air, put the audience at, at make them comfortable. And because I got a nice shaped head, I was good. I was, I was fine, but you know, <laughs> but I didn't want to, you know, make, make, make anybody uncomfortable. And it was the end of chemotherapy. I'd had the surgery, I was so depleted, and I still had radiation in my future. And colleagues at GMA, we came up with a series to encourage each other to do something that we wouldn't normally want to do. And for me, because they knew I was not feeling good about myself, and they thought just the opposite, they challenged me to be in a fashion show, a live fashion show. Isaac Mizrahi. Oh, he got me in this boo, this red gown. I mean, it was beautiful. So the morning of Good Morning America, going to be live fashion show. There are other models. These youngins were Gravity hadn't set in yet, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and here I am with my little wig on, and I was about to walk out on the runway. So they had all, you know, they all looking good going out, and I was like, oh, yeah. And there's, <laughs> there was a mirror before we would walk out. So I'm waiting, and they were all very kind. They were, they're all waiting. They're, you know, giving me a little fist pump, and, and I still, I've got my little trusty wig on, and I'm looking in the mirror, and nobody knew I was going to do it. I didn't even know I was going to do it. I whipped my wig off. And I walked right out there, just and bouncing around. I had like two hairs on my head. What was so encouraging is a few weeks later, a viewer called me in my office. And she said she was watching that morning with her young children. And that she started to cry. And her children were concerned and started asking her questions. And it began with, you know, Mama, why doesn't, why doesn't that woman on TV have any hair? And the mother explained, well, she's been sick, and she's had to take medicine to make her better. And she had this conversation with her children that she might not normally have had. And she said she was grateful because if for some reason it should happen to her, she could say to her children, you remember that woman you saw? And she was smiling, and you see her every morning on TV. She's OK. And you know what? Mama's going to be OK, too. 
And that's why it's so important to share stories. That's why I felt it was important to share my story. So that was 2007 when you really didn't share that much. For five, bless you, five years living my life. I drove the pace car in the Indy 500. I had a, a, a music video with Martina McBride. I am feeling great. 2012 comes along and I'm not feeling like I normally did. Long story short, myelodysplastic syndrome, MDS. The very, very treatment that saved my life had now put it in peril. And let me be clear, I have no regrets whatsoever the medication that saved my life in 2007. But it's also important to note all the strides, the money that is being raised for research, so now we can be more targeted. So now they had to throw the kitchen sink at me, and I'm glad that they did and that I'm still here. But now to be able to be more targeted at the specific cancer and not damage the other aspects of your body. And unfortunately, that I fell into that small, very small category that that happened. And so I was told that I had a year or two to live unless I had a successful bone marrow transplant, which I had never heard of before. I went to my siblings. The doctor said, get them checked to see if they can be a donor. They had already gone on the registry, and there was not a match for me. So I needed it to be one of my siblings. And to find out later that only 30% of the time does that happen? 70% of the time you need somebody off the registry and the doctors had already said there was no one on the registry. And so two of my siblings had been automatically eliminated for different reasons. And that left one sibling that could possibly be a match. My father had passed away about five years before that. I went to my mom and I said, you know, we're waiting on the results from Sally Ann and I have a very important question to ask you, mama. Does daddy have any more kids out there that I don't know about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have heard her react. Oh, mercy. I'm like, hey, fighting for my life here. I don't know. Here was a fly boy. Who knows? <laughs> thankfully, 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 my sister Sally Ann was a match. And when I notified her, because sometimes people will make themselves available to be a donor, but then for whatever reason will change their mind. And I reached out to her. And I told her that she was a match and would she be my donor. And Sally Ann said, not only will do I want to do it, I firmly believe that that's the reason I was born. Right? Woo! Uh, she felt the reason she, part of the reason she was born was to save her baby sister. And so thankfully was able to have a successful bone marrow transplant. And my sister and I have been adamant at getting people on the registry. Everybody's got something. Mine was cancer and MDS. I don't know what your something is. Could be cancer, could be another illness, could be unemployment, could be divorce. We get a big bowl in the middle of this gorgeous room right here, and everybody threw their something in that bowl next to somebody else's something. I bet you you take your something back. You never know what someone else is going through. And all those things that I listed, that's not the tragedy. The tragedy is if we don't take the time to say, why was this placed in my path? What am I supposed to learn? And more importantly, what am I supposed to share from what I've learned in the hopes of helping someone else who might be walking a similar path? And that has been my hope in sharing my story. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, stretch, because it's taking Dr. Baker a little long to get here. Come on, Dr. Baker. She's, yeah, she would, oh, she cute. She wore heels. She wore heels, so she's cute. Okay. All right. Hello. Hello. Which chair would you like? Whichever one. Oh, oh I'm not, goodness. I haven't gotten to the, that stage yet of like, this is my good side or bad oh. side. You know oh, how I, people I, like, I don't. <laughs> real <laughs> quick, um, oh. before we get into this, uh, we have an announcement. There is an anonymous donor that is willing to match dollar for dollar any gifts from this moment on. So let's raise some money, put it in the wow. envelope, whatever it is, dollar for dollar. <laughs> paddle sweep. It's amazing. We're going to do the paddle sweep where you we'll throw it in. All right, the 100 bucks or, all right, 100 bucks. So just put it in that bucket one more wow. time if you haven't done it. 
because we are going to have a prize, like I said, at the end here, $1,500. And uh, sorry, I had to interrupt that real no, quick. No, please interrupt. And, uh, I thought it was somebody was double parked. That no. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dr. Baker, Robin, hey. take it away. Okay. Oh. oh, my goodness. What an honor this is for me. I am such a huge fan. Thank you. And we all are such huge fans. And I, I would really like to thank you for coming, sharing your story, and... Um, and just giving us the inspiration that, that you do, it's, it's just, you're, you're such an you're inspiration very kind. to us. Thank you. Um, how are you today? Or how is your health today? Oh, my goodness. Um, my health as of today is very, very good. This is the longest stretch that I have been healthy in a long time because 2007 was when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, triple negative. Um, 2012 was MDS. And there were some very tenuous years in between but I just recently celebrated my 10-year anniversary from the transplant. That's amazing. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's been a decade. And um, I'm, I'm meditating. I'm making sleep a priority. Um, I'm thinking of my mental wellness as well as my physical wellness, and I am very grateful to be doing well on very limited medication now and just uh, astounded that um, and, and grateful for as well as I'm doing. I... I read your book, which was amazing, and I loved it. Thank um, you. And I hear that you practice Transcendental Meditation. Yeah, TM. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that, and how has that helped you in your, in your life and in, and in your um, journey with, with cancer? Thank you. i, I got to say this. I am so grateful that more and more in the public's eye, uh, starting with athletes, are talking about their mental wellness. And before, uh, you know, when you have cancer or something like that, it's very it's very evident that you're, you're not well. Um, but when you're having just your, your mental well-being, it's, it's not as easy to uh, detect, and people are uh, less sympathetic. Um, so I was um, going through depression. Everyone feels that after you complete your treatment, you're going to be ooh, the happiest person that you could be. And I thought that too. And I was, I was surprised that I went through a, a, a period of depression. And I realized it was because I didn't have a doctor checking on me anymore. And I, I was worried about the cancer returning. And I was just in this really deep, deep funk. And um, I was able to, to get through that. And I was feeling better. And then I started to, again, not feel quite myself. And I was doing Good Morning America and, um, with, with George. And there was something that happened on the show that I thought I, it just made me like, oh. And I, I, would, I was about to turn to him because I'm like, if I'm like this, I know my George is going to be like, what? And uh, not, yeah, could you see George Stephan all this, what? No, not. <laughs> so I, I turned to him, and he's just like, mm, and I'm like, what? So I said, uh, we went to commercial break. I'm like, George, what, how are you so serene? And he told me about Transcendental Meditation, that he started it. So I went to his instructor. I've been doing it now for about five years consistently. And don't be one of those that, oh, I can't quiet my mind. I can't quiet my thoughts. You're not supposed to quiet your thoughts. You're alive. You have thoughts. It just teaches you how to kind of push them to the side, go back to your mantra. And it's just what my grandma used to call quiet time. Uh, she didn't realize that she was meditating. We've, she been, we've been doing it for I forever, know, forever, right? Have you done it? Do you? I, I have not tried it yet, but I, I'm, I'm going to now. It's, I, it's great. Yeah. I do it twice a day, and yeah. it just really makes, it makes all the difference in the world. What I do, however, and I think you do too, is Peloton. Tell oh me, yes. So I know you're you're an athlete, and you've been an athlete oh, your whole your whole you <laughs> your whole life. My my friends who know me out there are laughing right now because um, <laughs> I love the Peloton. But um, you've been an athlete your whole life, mm -hmm. and I can only imagine that being an athlete when you went into cancer helped you both physically and emotionally and mentally. The 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 ability to, to you know how how did that how did that it help is, you? As you know, this facing any kind of illness is as much mental as it is physical. And so part of the reason why I did not want to share in the beginning that um, I was diagnosed with cancer, there was a part of me that was like, oh, I took such pride in, in saying, I, you know, I ate right, moderate drinker, never, had, never smoked, no drugs, anything like that, and uh, had been active all of my life. And my doctor said to me, hey, you know what, it didn't prevent you from having cancer, but boy, it's going to help you kick its butt. And it's so true because I approached it as an athlete. 
my doctors, those were my coaches, and the nurses, they were my coaching staff, and the chemo, radiation, all that, that was the game plan, the treatment was the game plan, and so I approached it as uh, with an athlete's mind, and I, I'm just so grateful, though, that I had uh, the right people around me to kind of kind of surround me because it is it's it's just I, I am I look I am in case you haven't noticed I'm an eternal optimist I that's why my new book you know brighter by the day I really see how I plugged the book like that that was just very very smooth <laughs> uh, like that. What, you, what, what what is brighter by the day what, where, well, where did the title the come day, from it, uh, waking up to new dreams and new hopes new ways um, it's it's just we always think macro everything has to be big and huge. It's so many times, it's just the little things. It's just, just one day. Let this just be brighter by the day, just, just, just today. Uh, instead of always saying, you know, one day, one day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to you know, get on Peloton. One day I'm going to start meditation. Flip it. Make it day one. Instead of saying one day, day one. And that's how I look at brighter, brighter by the day. But I'm grateful that um, my background really helped me in fighting cancer. And I do. I do love Peloton. In fact, at the hotel, they have it, so I'm going to be oh, on it right. a little bit later. <laughs> so uh, everybody at this, at this luncheon and, and um, that has been involved with this for years, you know, they've raised a lot of money, $8 million yeah, and wow. for, for, wow. um, for breast cancer and um, for our women's center. And, um, and they all, uh, when we're so appreciative of that. I'm a radiologist. I work in the breast center, and I, I thank every single one of you um, for helping us do our job. But anyway. Um, <laughs> That's huge. Um, That's good. I know we all know people, and even ourselves, um, going through cancer, and we want to help um, when we know Ooh. somebody who's going through it. Yeah. What, what were the the things that your friends and family and colleagues did for you that were so meaningful and important and helpful, because you never really know what to do um, know, for somebody. I know, Was I there? know Dr. Baker. It's so, and I, I'm going through that right now because my longtime uh, partner, Amber, is currently going through breast cancer. And so we have flipped roles. So We've been sorry. together for almost 18 years. And so she's been through my two journeys. And she was diagnosed at the end of last year and um, has been going through treatment this year, and so I'm now the caregiver, um, and she taught me how to be a caregiver uh, by being by my side. What helped me, um, the little things. I remember um, a dear friend realized that I love to handwrite thank you notes, and so they purchased thank you cards for me and already put the stamp on the envelope. I mean, like those little thoughtful things like that. When I went through MDS and um, um, I was in isolation for a great period of time, I was away from work for five, six months, and I knew that Amber needed to get a break because she would be with me during the week. My friends, without me even saying anything or asking, they got together. They made a plan. They had a schedule. They, they would tell me, like, oh, Beth's coming in this weekend. So-and-so's coming in next weekend to give Amber a break without me, again, anything that you could do, because oftentimes we'll go to the person who's going through it and go, what do you need? What, what can I do for you? We got so much on our mind. You anything know what that you, you can do on your own, and just knowing your friend and loved one, and knowing, like, the, my friend who knew that I liked to write thank you notes. It's, it's those little things like that. And one morning, um, a dear friend who's, who's no longer with us, John Saunders, who had gone through cancer, and one morning he just showed up at Good Morning America, he knew I was going through chemo, brought me lemon drops because he knew I would get, uh, I mean, it was just like, it was, and just, he just came in, gave me the lemon drops, gave me a hug, and walked out. Oh, it was just, it was just those, yeah. those little moments. So don't think you have to do something grandiose, just knowing that uh, it just means a lot when you know someone is thinking of you. Yeah. I think it must be hard because um, you were, as you said, when you were first diagnosed, you felt um, you didn't know how much you wanted to share of right. it. Mm -hmm. So what have been the challenges of, of sharing your story? Ooh. Because you have really um, yeah. shared it. And yeah. um, I, I can imagine that that was hard. Oh, it was, it was really. I mean, again, this is 2007 in the beginning. And I know it's more commonplace now for people um, from all walks of life to share. But it was a little um, unheard of at that time, especially for a journalist. And I had to debate on how much 
to share because I never, uh, what, what just, and I could not believe it, that our competitors uh, would claim, oh, we're doing it for ratings. I'm like, oh, would you kid? Are you kidding me? Like, I like, yes. I, so th that kind of negativity, and when you're going through, you, you need to have some positive energy around you. And um, it was just people who were feeling that I was doing it to benefit the show. Um, but also, there were sometimes I didn't feel well. Right. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't. Um, you want to focus on yourself and you, feel, you don't feel well exactly. and you don't feel like. And, my, and one of my dearest friends, Diane Sawyer, yes, I just dropped her name, Diane Sawyer. <laughs> and she is a dear, dear friend. And she was my colleague at the time, um, or my co anchor at the time, going through breast cancer. And she was so upset with me. She did not want me to share. She, and I, I didn't understand it at the time, and it wasn't that she was being selfish. She was just like, no, I, you know, Robin, you, I want you just to concentrate on yourself. Focus but on everyone's yourself. different, and I, and I want to say this. You know, there, there are some people, when we were acknowledging earlier, those of us who are, I always say, thrivers instead of survivors, and there might have been somebody who went through, I, I see you with your green hat on. Yeah, go on with your bad self. All right. <laughs> There might be somebody who has gone through it, but they didn't raise their hand, and that's okay. It's, it's a personal choice on how much you want to share. Absolutely, so. and, and how you take care of yourself um, first yeah. and then to help everyone else in your own way. Yeah. There are different ways. But you I had a platform. It, I, it yeah. was such a te I thought it was just such a teachable moment, um, and I, I'm just really grateful that it was so well received um, by so many people and, and, and to this day and I was, I was talking about this earlier to some folks that it's not I don't hear from patients I hear from their loved ones I hear from doctors and nurses who say thank you because when their loved one or their patient sees me on in the morning and they know that at one point I was barely a hundred pounds they saw me the second time when I came back I did not wear a wig this time I was like nope this is it and I remember when my mom was still living, and, and, and I had that really fine hair. And, and, and she looked at me, and she, and she met really well. She goes, oh, you look like a little Greek boy. Like, I was <laughs> like, thank you, Ma thank you um, Mama. I, thank you. But, um, but I, 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 I feel that I am a walking, breathing example of this too shall pass for folks. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, and I got to say, the reason I'm, I'm doing this, and I, I love being outdoors and all, um, uh, my <laughs> sister, uh, who was my bone marrow donor, and I'm grateful to her beyond, but I have her DNA, and I have her allergies now. I have her oh, allergies. Isn't that interesting? Oh, my gosh. And her you sweet tooth. I never had a sweet tooth before. <laughs> but uh, she was like, I, I can't complain. I can't complain. Oh, I have so many questions. Um, <laughs> you know, um, you're a career woman, and um, and I'm a career woman. We have a lot of career women yeah. here, and we have a lot of women here who um, may not have a, a career in in this way, but they are so philanthropic, and they make mm. their life philanthropy, and they are incredibly involved. Everybody here is is sort of a career woman in one way or another, and I think that I'm really curious how your illness and how having cancer. How did you handle that being with your career? I mean, you, you get a diagnosis like that, and I can imagine that you think, okay, I, how can I do two things at once? I need to focus on this. It how was, that... uh, but I'm, I, I humbly say I'm, I, there are many, many people who have um, been diagnosed and they go on with their life, and it just so happened that I was in the public's eye, right. and it did put a little more, more pressure on me, and I was very grateful because at first I didn't share, and the, the moment I decided to, when we went on the air, and I was with Diane, and we often called ourselves Thelma and Louise, because we thought we were going over the cliff many mornings doing live TV together, and she was holding my hand when I said, I have, you know, as my family knows at home and family here, I have breast cancer. And I slept like a baby that night for the first time, because I felt the prayers that were being said for me, and that more than made up for uh, here I thought I was doing, not thought, I was, I was the one wanting to give. I received so much more in return from, from folks. And um, I remember, though, with the MDS diagnosis and the doctor saying after the transplant that I would be out of work, 
I couldn't work for five to six months. And I remember I was like, that's where I was just, that's, I can't, you can't. I thought I, there's no Say, way. Wait, you mean six weeks? No, <laughs> I, right. And I couldn't believe it was going to be six months. And I was very appreciative that, of course, where I'm working, they, that they were understanding of that. Um, but I look back at it now, and I'm, that's why I'm saying I'm so grateful that we're in this, this time. And maybe it's something that we've learned through these last two years of, of COVID. And, and that those of us that have been fortunate enough not to be impacted by the death of a, of a loved one or, or someone that we know, um, that it was a big reset button. What is, what, where I really want to spend my time and resources and, and energy. And it was just, and I have found that to be the case. And I just kind of reevaluated. And I'm much more mellow now than it's I was. It's everything in perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the other question is about, you talk a lot in your book about aging, about your perspective. Maturing. Maturing. <laughs> Maturing. I'm so sorry. Um, about how your perspective on maturing yes. has changed. Oh, yes, a wise one. I am now <laughs> grasshopper. Um, oh, gosh. It really, I, you know, I, I, you, I, you, you've heard me refer to my mother on more than one occasion. And I know, she, I remember when she would say, you just wait. You just wait. You, and boy, she's right. You know, when I get up, it's nose over toes, you know. Um, <laughs> Oh, it is not, as the famous saying, it is not for sissies. And um, but what I have found in this season of my life, which I am thoroughly enjoying, I will celebrate, and it will be a celebration, my 62nd birthday coming up in November. And you're supposed to go, ooh, you're 62? Black don't crack, baby. Black don't crack. You feel me. Um, uh, but what I have found... And what has really helped me, I read this terrific book, and I encourage everyone who is maturing and um, to find that joy. And Missy Buchanan, who wrote my mother's um, autobiography, and Missy said in her book, she said, what is it that brought you joy as a child? What is it that you did that just made you so happy? And for me, it was tennis. And I hadn't played tennis in years. And a couple of years ago, for my 60th, I started playing tennis again. And I've been playing ever since. And I'm that little kid in Mississippi again. I'm the little kid who has that bowl of melting strawberries and cream next to me. So I think it's so important as we mature to, to not lose sight of those things that brought us joy. And I'm just so, uh, I'm so grateful um, that I have, that, that, I, that I, I recognize that, that there's, there's a reason and season for everything, and I'm thoroughly enjoying this, this season of my life. Thank you so much. I, from all of us, this has been um, absolutely you, lovely and so wonderful. I appreciate it very much. Thank you all. Thank you very, very much. Great to see. Oh, you all in the shade. You guys lucked out. Look at him. Dr. Baker, thank you. Thank you, so and thank you for the work that you do. I appreciate it very much. Let's hear, let's hear one more time, Robin Roberts, and thank you, Dr. Baker, yes. Well, you heard there's an anonymous donor who's going to match dollar for dollar. We're going to do one last paddle sweep for that $1,500 bottle of exclusive wines from the Jason Ting and family and Jeff Ting from their late great father, John Ting. They have a really beautiful wine from saint Emilion, France, worth $1,500, so Put it in the paddle, uh, the paddle bin, rather. We're going to put it right here. We're going to do the drawing right now. So if you could just drop that in at some point, we're going to collect it, and we're going to pick that winner right now. And thank you again, Robin and Dr. Baker, for your outstanding Q&A and uh, for being so candid and honest and so amazing here. Uh, so let's get it going. We got the raffle prizes coming up. And uh, congratulations to our live auction winners earlier today as well. So uh, we've got this 18-carat rose gold carpe diem pendant with a lot of money there for your raffle. And we have another sapphire bracelet, 18-carat pink sapphire bracelet. And the $1,500 bottle of wine 
from the exclusive Ting Family Wine Collection. So 100 bucks. That's it. If we could all do this together, strength in numbers, like Coach Kerr has said from day one when we won the NBA championship, strength in numbers. Let's get everyone here. We're going to make a moment out of this here in just a few moments. Let's do the raffle, and then we're going to close with that $100 fund-to-need level. So first one is an 18 carat. Rose, gold, carpe diem, pendant. This is a great value for a raffle winner here today. Let's spin it. Look at all the support, by the way. That is wonderful. And uh, what a great day today. We certainly did a lot. We're not done yet. Let's keep it going. Let's get some prizes to some folks today. Uh, we're going to have, uh, I believe, Robin's book for sale, too, right? So if you want to do that, that would be great. Very inspiring. First one. Here it is. That's a professional here with a stamp with the name and address. And the name of Patricia Buchanan. Come on down. Patricia Buchanan, come on down. You've just got yourself an 18-karat rose gold carpe diem pendant, and it's all yours. All right, congratulations, Miss Patricia Buchanan. Let's get, oh, my goodness, we got a winner here. Here we go. Okay. Congratulations. We'll get your prize. Okay, 18-karat pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Pink Sapphire Bracelet, and that winner goes to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can I read that today? Uh, it starts with letter M. That's all I know. M. McCaffrey? Margaret McCaffrey. One of our newest board members won a prize. Congratulations. Miss McCaffrey, come on down. We got a nice little 18 karat pink. I love the color pink. Pink is nice. How's it going, everybody viewing at home? All right. Here we go. Let's get the, uh, I think that was it. All right. Round of applause. Winners, winners. Thank you for your support, everybody. Every dollar counts. We're getting so close to our goal. But we have that one winner to win that 1,500 bottle of wine. I mean, you know it's good when it's at least $1,500. Thank you again to the Ting family and their wine sellers to donate an exclusive. Do we have one more prize? All right. Oh, let, let's do the, I think there's one more prize, actually. It's a ribbon. I don't know where that is. Let's see. Where's that description? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's the it's the 18 karat rose gold ribbon pen. All right, that's the third one. All right, my my apologies. We've got a third one. It's beautiful, 18 karat rose gold ribbon pen valued at three hundred fifty dollars. That goes to. Wow, we have professional raffle folks here because they have a. a, a Little stamp, Keith Duncan. Keith Duncan, come on down. All right, next we're gonna move. Let's do the uh, the wines. All right, here we go. Fifteen hundred dollars. Let's do it. Thank you to all who uh, gave a hundred bucks here today. Thanks for coming to the luncheon. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna mix it up actually. I don't want to be responsible for this pick. So does anyone else want to do it? Why don't you do it? That is a very good number. Ladies and gentlemen, someone's going home with this, and that is bidder number two, two, two. Who's got it? Two, two, two. Who's got it? 2000 Chateau Cheval Blanc, Saint Emilion, Grand Cru, from the family of the Tings donating this prize. 
We got a winner. Come on up here. Two, two, two. Congratulations. You got a very nice premium bottle of wine. All right. Let's go ahead and claim your prize. All right. Thank you, everybody. Give yourselves a big hand. Let's close it out with Amanda here. What a beautiful day in the luncheon. Congratulations. Back to you, Amanda. Back to me to close it out with everyone. I have some important information that I need to share with you before you leave. Today, during our auction, we raised over 250000 And online, we have an additional 50000 and counting. That's without our paddle sweep. That's without the fan fund needs. If you'd still like to donate, I will remind you that you have fans on your table. Thank you for, to everyone today who donated. A special thank you to Robin Roberts and Dr. Baker for their fantastic presentation. A big thank you to Janet Wagner, our fearless leader at Mills Peninsula Medical Center. And if you'll all do me one last kindness, please, please give a round of applause for the fantastic Mills Peninsula Hospital Foundation staff who put on this event today. Thank you to our wonderful staff. Have a fantastic day. I look forward to seeing you all again next year when we hopefully invite you back in the spring for a larger women's luncheon. Have a wonderful day.